Good morning everybody and welcome to my channel. Sorry for getting this video out a week late. I ended up having a busy weekend last week and I wasn't able to get a video out. So I always say it's better late than never and it's better to get going again fairly quickly rather than let a couple weeks go by before I post my next review. So this is the Scribe Sword fountain pen that I've had for a couple weeks now and I've had the opportunity to use it for a decent amount of time. So I've, I've seen it come up a few times across some other blogs saying that it's a good beginner fountain pen. It's got a decent price point and you can almost always find it on sale. I actually found this on sale for 99% 99, 99 off on Facebook. So at that point I was like, I got to give this guy a shot. You know, it was only a couple bucks. So, you know, why not at that point? So I ordered it, um, and when I received it, it comes in this, I don't know if I'll be able to get all of it in camera, but it comes in this nice um, box. It's like a faux leather cover. Then if you open it up, you can see the pen would sit under that ribbon, and then it's got a set of, it's five or six, uh, just standard, one, two, three, four, five, six, standard, pretty standard international cartridges. So you're able to get going pretty much right off the bat with this, whether you have a, whether you don't have any ink or if you have a bottle of ink because it also comes with a pretty good sized converter. So I have Diamine Prussian Blue in this. This is what the pen that I use to review that ink. Be sure to check out that review um, in my other videos if you're interested in that ink review. So when I first received this pen, I was, I kind of put it aside for a little while. Um, I had a couple other fountain pens inked up and I'm not one that likes having more than maybe two or three inked up at a time just because I don't have a lot of opportunities to write at work, for example. You know, I, I do write a decent amount, but, you know, I don't like carrying a fountain pen in the community because, um, you know, I'm worried I'm going to drop it, drop them. I have dropped pen on the nib before, just like all of us. And it's terrible. Even if I got this for a good deal, I still don't want to ruin it. I, it, you know, I don't like breaking any of my pens. So it took me a little while for it to fill it up with ink. And I actually filled it up with the Monteverde Magenta, another ink review that I did because I was like, Hey, I'm going to start doing ink reviews. So let's get this going. And I could not for the life of me, get this pen to work. I would dip the pen in ink and start writing and I couldn't get it to write. Even then it would only write fairly little. I would twist the converter to get ink to actually fill the feed to where I could see the ink bubbling up down here and I still couldn't get it to write. I'm not super confident with like flossing fountain pen nibs or doing my own adjustments and for a pen like that, I'm like I don't know what I'm gonna do. So I actually got in contact with Scribe Sword through Amazon, which is where I bought it from. And they sent me another one, no questions asked. You know, they were like, I just explained what was going on. And they're like, oh yeah, it sounds like the tines are too tight. So they sent me another one. I think within a week, I had another one in my mailbox. And so I got it. I filled it up immediately with the Prussian Blue because I had already re reviewed the Gratitude Magenta from Monteverde. And it worked very well. Um... So I've actually been able to use this for a couple weeks now. And, you know, I was just impressed with their lifetime warranty, almost no questions asked. So, yeah, so it's a good, you're making a decent investment here. So let's get into doing this. Like I said, I've already had a couple weeks to use this. Um, I've, I've found that it works pretty consistently well. I've had a few hard starts, mostly when the pen's been sitting for a while. The reason that I mention I'm a little disappointed in that is because it is advertised as having an airtight seal to where you're not going to get those hard starts because the ink's not drying up in the tip when it's capped. And I haven't had that experience. Actually, right before this review, I was doing one, I was actually recording and I tried to write with it. And I was like, oh, I got to get this working again. So I, as far as I know, it's working. So I can do a little bit of a writing sample for you. And yeah, we can do that. So that's one of the issues that I've had. If you're not consistently using the pen to keep the ink flowing, then you're going to get those hard starts, at least in my experience with it. So let's start off with the nib. So the nib itself, let's see if I can get it to focus that close. There we go. That's decent. So the nib itself is stainless steel. It's fairly simple. 
Um, you can see it just has the scribe sword logo a little before that. Uh, I always forget what that hole is called. The feed hole, I think, is what it is. Um, I'm probably wrong. Oh, and it went out of focus there. So nothing special on the feed, the, yeah, anything really. It's stainless steel, so you're not going to get any flex. When I was trying to get my other pen to work, I was a little more aggressive with the flex and trying to bend it just to get those tines to spread open and it wasn't working. So it's a pretty solid nib. Um, the writing experience is pretty good across. Um, different kinds of papers. It's not very scratchy. It tends to be pretty smooth. And so, I mean, it's a pretty decent nib for a stainless steel nib. The unfortunate thing is it only comes in medium at this time. So that's all you're going to get out of it, really. So if I were to get to, let's go to the back where I do my other writing samples. Um, one thing I've noticed is that, oh, there is a hard start there. I'll try to get this working again for you. There we go. I'm shaking the camera. <laughs> it's a little bit unsteady today, and I don't know why it's more unsteady today than others. So one thing I have noticed is that it's a bit, it's fairly wet. I mean, this should be a blue-black ink with some with a bit of gray in it. Um, again, check out my written post, especially of this Diamine Prussian blue ink, because you'll notice it's like a dark, stormy blue. And here you're almost seeing it as black. So this pen does put down quite a bit of ink, especially on that downstroke. So you'll see, especially on the bottom of an A or an O, that it's really dark. This one is not um, doing that. I think it's because the ink's just starting flowing again. So. But overall, I mean, like I said, the writing experience is pretty good. On some of the cheaper papers, you are going to get some of that feathering that you'll notice um, with wet inks. Again, I'm using Diamine, which is a pretty wet ink. Um, <clears throat> so it is going to, it, it's probably going to feather. Um, not too bad. Like I said, it really depends on the ink. If you get into like some Noodlers, Tchaikovsky, something like that, it might not. But that's a pretty dry ink. So the grip, nothing fancy here, stainless steel. Again, the whole body of the pen is stainless steel, so it has a decent amount of weight to it. <clears throat> These just have two grooves pretty high up. I tend to hold my pen pretty close towards the tip, a bit like that, so you can see my fingers going over the end of the grip. That's how I tend to write. I tend to write pretty close, and I haven't noticed getting any ink on my fingers too much, but the grip itself, somewhat slippery not going to offer you too much i haven't noticed that it's um anything terrible so nothing fancy there but the body itself same deal brush stainless steel so you get a nice somewhat coarse finish it, it's hardly noticeable so it's pretty smooth but you can still still feel the grip from that brush steel um, it's a bit of a cigar shape so maybe the torpedo um, style, maybe the cigar, but pretty smooth. Um, like I said, you're still going to notice a bit of the grip, but not too much. So it's got a smooth cap at the top, kind of ends in a flat point, so you don't get the nice rounded curve that I like on the Pilot Metropolitan, for example. It's just all aesthetic, so nothing that's going to affect function or anything like that. Um, you are able to post the cap on the back. Given it's all stainless steel, you are going to notice a bit of top heaviness while it's up there. Nothing that's going to like super throw off the weight of the pen. Um, the tip, it's, or the cap, has a slight hourglass figure to it, um, which I think gives it a nice look. Um, I, I always like that, so I don't know how well you can see that. But um, yeah, the clip, also stainless steel, it is a pretty solid clip, so it is going to hold up in your pocket in a pen loop. I've had it in a Light Hit Lab Smart Fit A5 notebook cover, and they've got a pen thing on the, like a little pen pocket on the front, and it holds in there really well. No problems there. Um, it is a bit hard. It's kind of pointed at the tip. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's a bit pointed, which can make it harder to get into the actual loop. But you know, that's something that's fairly easy to work around. So I don't have super accurate measures of this pen of this pen because I don't have some of the other resources that I use to get measurements.
but the closest I could get on these measurements were it's just a hair shy of 5.5 inches or about 136 millimeters when it's capped. Um, when it's uncapped, it's about 4.85 inches or 123 millimeters. Posted, it's just about six inches coming in at 152 millimeters. So the, the diameters of things are where I have the hardest time measuring um, just because I don't have a good, I actually don't have string, which is how I'd measure that. Um, I guess I could use floss or something, but that'd be kind of hard. So um, the grip itself is just shy of an inch or about 25 millimeters in diameter. Um, the diameter of the pen itself is about 1.4 inches or somewhere between 35 and 37 millimeters. And just like I can't get a good measurement of diameters, I can't get a good measure of weight. So I tried to compare it to some of my other pens that might be common among the community. So a Zebra F701, it's a little bit heavier than that. They are both made of steel, so... Um, this should be fairly close because they're similar in size. The F701 is a bit beefier, but this was a bit heavier because it has more to it. Um, and it seems like it's just slightly heavier than a Rotring 800. So if you have any of those, it's going to be somewhat similar. So overall, I can't say that this is my favorite pen. I have enjoyed using it. The grip is a bit too small for my preferences. It reminds me of my Schaefer that I reviewed before that I didn't like too much. That was mostly because of the scratchy nib, which seems to be um, variable nib experiences that people are having, because some people really like those. But back to this one. Um, my biggest gripe with it is it advertised as a airtight seal and my experience hasn't been airtight so I've had like I said I have a couple fountain pens this is the reason why I only like having one or two inked so I can actually use them pretty consistently otherwise they dry out and it just gets annoying getting them again I don't always have a little cup of water to dip them with so I do have to lick it sometimes which is super gross I know so that's my that's my only real complaint about the pen. Um, it writes pretty well for a stainless steel nib. The ink flows pretty consistent, if a little on the wet side. So you might get some feathering on some really cheap papers, especially that cheap copy paper that I have to use at work, unfortunately. Um, I like that for the $30 price point, it comes with a converter and some cartridges. So if it's your first fountain pen, you're good to go right off the bat, regardless of what you have, or regardless of what experience you have with fountain pens. Just throw a cartridge in and you're good to go. Um, and I mean, they have, they've got a lifetime warranty, which I like about any company. And they, I've, my experience is they stand by it. So I feel like you're going to get a pretty, you know, decent fountain pen. I feel like it's a bit steep at $30, but um, for that price point, I'd prefer a Lamy Safari personally. Um, but for 30 bucks, you're getting a lifetime warranty. And even if some, even if you have some accidental damage, so thanks scribe sword they are looking at um what is it called they are looking at releasing some different nib sizes so hopefully you know i liked the medium on this one it's more like a japanese medium so a bit closer to a fine but hey if they're gonna make a smaller nib i like smaller nibs i am moving towards a preference towards medium though lately so i feel like it's a good good worth the buy especially if you can find it on sale so this review went a bit longer than i expected but thanks again for watching and as always please subscribe have a great rest of your day